Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our first Friday Fundamental of the summer session. My name is James Henderson and I will be taking you through basically the design and using of the tools for the custom kitchen that you see on the screen. Now, over the course of the next hour, I have a lot of information that I'm going to attempt to cover. So during the Friday Fundamentals, which is different than some of the training classes which you have possibly taken, I will not be opening up the phone lines for um, questions and such. I'm just simply going to ask that you watch and learn at this stage. And then if you have any um, feedback or comments, et cetera, we can maybe save them till the end. I will be recording the class today um, so that I can possibly post this next week to our social media pages. And you'll be able to actually go back and review some of the things that we have done. Now, in the case of the, uh, the kitchen that we're doing, we're going to be covering up a number of subjects. First of all, we'll just be dealing with straight kitchen cabinet layout, which you can see with the base cabinets and the island that we have here. We'll also be talking about some customization using uh, some of the, the, the defining tools within Softland to set up our um, upper cabinets that you see on the screen. Above and beyond that, we will also be going in and importing some custom symbols for use within the plan. So for example, the, uh, the, the, the little mockets or pop-up electrical outlets that you see in the counter, I'm gonna teach you how to bring those in from an external source so that you can see them. And then of course, we want to add the textures and the lighting, et cetera. So there is a lot that we want to get to uh, in this uh, 60 minutes or so that we have. And so I'm going to basically at this stage drag this image off of the screen so that we can get ourselves started. Now we're treating this project very much like a, um, a remodel. And so in essence, all I'm concerned about right now is going to be the area that you see on the, on, on the, uh, the actual drawing screen itself, okay, which is going to basically for all intents and purposes be where we'll be laying this out. We've got an existing dining area up here, an existing great room. And so while I have drawn basically the outline of the floor plan, realistically what I'm interested in, not even you know anything to do with stairs, was just this area that we're going to be opening up. And so to get ourselves started, we're going to begin laying the kitchen cabinets out. And so I'm just going to come to the draw pull down menu right here and I can select cabinet. And what you'll see is we have a list of cabinets, you know, uh, on the on the the, uh, the pull down menu. And from here, I can select the base cabinet as being the selection that I want to go with. When you select the down arrow key beside the type, this is where you can access wall, base, vanity, desk, etc. And so in this case, base is what I want to do. And then I can also pick from the, the, the different shapes for the base cabinet. So in this case, I wanna go with a corner cabinet, which you can see is outlined now as kind of the L shape that we have right there. From there, I can select the size, what that is going to look like. So in this case, a 36 inch, and I can even go down in my case, and I wanted to set this up as having unequal legs, which is to say we're going to basically um, have a, a section of the cabinet that kind of tucks in behind and we'll, we'll butt another cabinet up to that. And then from there, we can select the cabinet face. And so these are all the predefined faces that ship with the software. So in my case, I can just simply scroll to find what it is that I want, in this case, let's say a door and drawer option and select OK. And so now the cabinet is being displayed for me there. With leaving the dialog open, because I'm going to be drawing multiple cabinets as we, we, we see you know, with the project. So I'm just going to simply click to draw that in and we'll see the cabinet is being drawn there. Now there's a small 3D preview down here in the lower left hand corner that you, you'll see as we draw. And in time we'll do a lot of flipping back and forth between 2D and 3D. But I want to lay a few cabinets out before I get there. And so what I will do is <laughs> I'm just going to change this from my my, uh, my my base corner to base rectangular, which would then allow me to once again go down and select the faceplate that I want, right? And even what the, the sizing is going to be as, as well. So it's just a matter of, this is kind of interchangeable. You can pick the face and you can pick the size. You can pick the size, you can pick the face. And then once you have done that, just simply click against the wall, 
where you want that cabinet drawn and click to draw it into the room. And as you pop into the 3D, you're going to see it drawing here. Now I am working in the shaded mode. And what I have done here is I've, I've got my shaded on, okay? And then underneath my options, I've also come into the mode options. And on face, I have turned textures on. This gives me a quick feedback as to what the, the textures look like, i.e. the hardwood that we have on the floor or any kind of coloring that we're going to do with textures, etc., without the high-end resolution of, of generating something that's ray traced or, or, or textured. All right. If I go to miscellaneous explode or you'll know if you take any of my training classes, I do a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Control E, it simply explodes the cabinet so I can see, you know, what cabinets are where. A cleanup or Control C is going to automatically put those back into one long running unit. And so, again, I'm just going to, you know, as I go forward, now select what the, the cabinet face and size is going to be and then click to insert it. And so you will see at this stage, I'm, I'm going to go relatively uh, quickly, okay, just to try and get a few things in there. So this will be a 36-inch you know, so that we can place a drawer on there, right? And then a 24 inch, which will place a dishwasher beside that. And then I can come down into, I'm just gonna add some some actual drawers. Now, right, uh, fairly popular uh, more and more, right? As far as kitchens are, are concerned. And so I can just, you know, click and add a few of those in there, you know, over to the right hand side. Now you can edit, I'm just gonna cancel this at this stage. I'm gonna hit explode. And we, we obviously have a gap right here. So I can actually edit this cabinet at this stage and I can can override the default to make it larger and then run a cleanup okay which is just going to you see the cabinets overlapping right there and the cabinets will actually you know all join together and in this case here now I'm just going to move that you know uh, in, into place I can also I'm gonna hit an undo I could just simply uh, use the adjust feature okay so I, in this case here just using move and adjust I can drag the end of that cabinet and drag it down to the wall to simply set up what the size is going to be. And in this case here, we're gonna put a, a custom, let's say 40 inch there and so on. So you can edit the cabinets, uh, you know, to suit. Okay, so in this case, 33, which means I'm gonna take this one down to a 36 or 37, you know, depending on what we're doing and it's going to update on the fly and then the cleanup feature which is just control c or this little icon right here will join them all together and as we take a look at it inside the 3d we can see what we have drawn thus far and so i'm going to continue to lay out some of these cabinets relatively uh, as quickly as i can because you, once you've seen some cabinets being drawn so we can you know jump into doing you know some more complex things with the cabinets so i'm going to come up here and just grab a 21 inch cabinet because i'm trying to keep the faces all the same uh, in this case here, I'll just, you know, the recessed door and drawer, uh, then we'll maybe grab a 30 and we want to have uh, maybe some drawers or, or, or and, and whatnot. And so I could do the same thing like this. And then I'm actually going to place a large range in here at this stage. So I can either type the cabinet in and replace it, or at some point we can just simply go in and draw it in. And so what I will do is I'm going to pick the draw symbol at this stage, and I'm just going to do a search. <laughs> for gas range. Now, when I do that, it will drill down and begin searching. So some of these are gonna be called gas range or they're gonna be associated with a um, an earmark within the program that, uh, you know, according to how that was saved into the library, an attribute pulls it up. That's why if you type in, for example, soaker, you can actually find soaker tubs in the library even though they're not named that. Now, Softland is constantly updating their, their libraries. Okay, so if you know that there's a specific library that you want to you know, find, okay, you could literally, I could have just typed in wolf, and this would be the one that just showed up this week on your, your news ticker tape where we added, you know, uh, two dozen, uh, or I think it was about 26 in all um, symbols here, but so in this case here, I can simply select from the library item that I want, okay, so this uh, gas range right here, and then position the cursor I want to add that, the bumping will automatically bump up to the cabinet for me and drop that symbol in. And so now, in this case here, as I pull this up, I'm going to use the draw select, and I'm just going to drop another base cabinet in like so, 
and then I can always move that into place. And so as I take a look at this inside 3D, this is what we have at this point. So now what we want to do is we want to deal with some of the upper cabinets that, that we've we've got in here. And this is where we can get into, you know, setting some sort of a customization on those upper cabinets. And so in this case here, <laughs> I'm just going to come in and to, to begin with inside the plan view, I'm going to uh, click my draw, click my cabinet, and I will select a wall cabinet, you know, for drawing. And I want to go with something that's the same width as the cabinet, so I'll pick the 24 inch, it's 30 inches in height, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I position my cursor to draw that, I just click and have it snap into the corner. Now, as I view this inside 3D, this is my cabinet here, right? And so, uh, but, but the design of this is going to call for maybe a, another box cabinet up on top of that there. And so, what I will do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the actual face of that cabinet. I'm going to customize it, if you will. So as I edit this cabinet here and I pull up the dialog, I'm actually, instead of just going to wall and typing in a new height here, I'm going to go to the face option. And right now you see that it's a wall two door. And so I'm going to enable the custom face option, which opens this dialog up for me right here. And when I open this up, I can see I've got my double door and you can see at this stage it's a standard size or standard door instead of glass or glass grill, etc. Okay, and it's the, the height scale. So as you change the height of this, if I went to 48 inches, it would stretch this cabinet face to suit. So what I'd like to do is actually fix that. OK, and so now I can keep and you can see with the fix, the default went to 24, inches, which means 12 inches of this would be left over as an open part of that cabinet. So I'll, I'll type in 36 because that's going to be correct. But then I'm going to come in here and add a new part, which will be a double door going above that. OK, and when I do that, I can now key in the standard type once again and I could leave it if I wanted it to scale. So if I change this, the height of this is going to go to whatever I want or I can fix it if I know it's a specific product code or dimensional size. And so in this case here, I'll just simply type in 18 inches. And so as I come back into the wall cabinet. OK, and I, I actually edit this cabinet now because by default it went in at 30 inches. And so I actually need to go into the wall cabinet and change the height to 54 to accommodate, you know, the 18 and the 36 that's going to sit below it. And now what you can do is type in what the, the either the offset, which is the measurement to the underside of the cabinet is going to be or what the top height is going to be. And these two things, you know, in essence, work in tandem. And so what we've done is we've gone ahead and we, we, we placed that cabinet it in there. And so once again, I'm going to come back to the, because drawing in the plan is a little bit easier for me. So I'm going to pick the draw select. I'm going to add a secondary one right there. And so now we've got two side by each. And in this case, I'm going to edit this cabinet and I'm going to go into the face. And I'm going to customize it. Okay. And for, for the customization of this one, I'm just actually going to go in and we're just going to set this to be both glass and I'll click OK. And we now get the glass option for that cabinet. And so that's, you know, real quick, how quickly you can just go ahead and begin, you know, setting something like that up. So again, I'm kind of popping back and forth between the plan view and the elevation view, if you will. And so if I do an explode, control E, it's going to, you know, explode that for me. And I'm going to pick draw select. And I'm going to draw the, 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 you know, the solid door one that's going to be in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom cabinet here that's actually going to be uh, utilized for placing the microwave in and maybe have some bookshelves and, and so on in there. So it gets a little bit, you know, more, um, you know, complex, if you will, from, from, from that, that, that perspective. So let's just do this. I'll use the draw select because it's just easy to, to do this. And then I can always edit that cabinet and, and change, you know, as far as its dimensions and so on. So here I can, you know, do a control E on this and I'm going to explode that so that I see it and I'm going to edit the width in at 33 inches and I'll just run a cleanup you know so that we've got those you know basically uh, breaking out and now I'll edit this cabinet and I'll go to the face okay so as you can see right now I've got the upper cabinets I've got the lower cabinets I'm going to edit the custom face on that cabinet right there and so when I do that, it pulls up the, the default properties of what we have. And so in this case here, I'm going to remove the bottom. Whoops. Uh, well, I, can, I guess I'll just build it from scratch. I'm going to pick an add part and I'm going to add an open cabinet at this point. And so when I add the open cabinet in, the type is NA and I can change the, the, the height to be fixed 
okay, which is going to set this at 36 inches, which will give us space for putting that, you know, in there. And then I'll add another part, breaking it down from there, and we'll add a double door above that. And in this case, we'll have the, the set doors right here. And again, we can fix those as far as what the dimension sizes are going to be. And so in this case here now, as I, uh, I click, you know, whether that's 24, 18, whatever, you know, needs to be, I think I had 18 in there, you know, for the other cabinets, I'll click, you know, OK on this. All right, and again, as I edit this individual height and so on, as we take a look at this inside 3D, we now have created an open cabinet in there, which in time, we'll be able to go in and edit this cabinet, okay? And we'll be able to go into the individual wall cabinet and add shelving in there, okay? And once we set the shelving, then we can set the microwave and so on up. All right, so that makes sense so far, hopefully, to, to, to uh, everyone as far as, you know, that goes. And so, likewise, you know, we could, you know, add another single cabinet in and, and so on. Okay, just depending on what the, you know, what room we have, et cetera. So that would just be, you know, a matter of creating a, a door and so on. And so I would probably just come in and just, you know, uh, measure, you know, briefly. So what is that dimension? How much do I have to work with? Right. And so if I've got, you know, give or take about 15 inches or so and you know in order to work for that where the windowsill is then I would just simply probably come in here using the draw cabinet okay and let me close that one so just draw cabinet I'm going to select the the wall cabinet I'm going to find the 15 inch so just a single door and I'll just drag this over here to the to the uh, to the side and draw it in then I can edit this as I've said I can go to the custom face you know on that option there it is I'm going to you know set up the the default as far as what that's going to look like and in this case I'm actually going to change it to be a glass option and then we'll add a a single door okay on top of that and we can then fix the size on that for what it needs to be. And so as we look at the wall cabinet and we change the, you know, the individual height of whatever it needs to be, and then we can change the offset, you know, so that everything suits. And as we take a look at it inside 3D, quickly we have put together some custom cabinets for us on that wall, okay? And so, uh, you know, again, I know the design, uh, you know, I'm drawing a little bit faster um, than, than, you know, what you would do because there would be a lot of process going into this, you know, this design process. But the, the point is to show you how you can do it. So as we're looking at this inside 3D, okay, I'm going to add a couple of other symbol items that we want to place in here. So I'm going to edit the sink that, you know, cabinet that I, I place, and I'm going to just do an edit on this. And on the base cabinet tab, I'll be able to come in here to where it says add symbol, and I'm going to click the add sink option. Now, Softline has, I mean, thousands of symbols in there, okay? Um, and in my case, I'm going to go to some manufacturers I'm familiar with. Understand that if you're a SoftPlan Plus subscriber, we are constantly updating this. So a couple times, you know, a week sometimes or every, you know, at least once a week, there's a new library being updated with symbols. Plus, it's open-ended, so you have the ability to bring your own symbols in. Now, in my case, I'm just going to go down into the manufacturer. I'm going to select, uh, let's say, Kohler at this stage, and I'm going to scroll down and just find sinks and uh, I'm actually looking for a farm sink and I, I, I know there's one all the way down at the bottom just you know uh, for, from experience so I will click OK and have that sink placed in there and I'm also going to go to tap while I'm at it and then I'll, uh, I may need to situate a few of these things in place okay but once again into manufacture and into Kohler and I could go to faucets and I could do a, a quick search for what they have and, and so just looking for something that will work and if I don't like what I see see, then what I will do is I will just do a search for it. And as I scroll down, I'm, I'm really quickly just scrolling the left-hand little pictures for, for the view of what I want to see. Uh, I may go a little bit too quick, and it may need to pass back up to, you know, do a second pass on this. But in essence, I'm just looking for a very specific, you know, type of symbol that I want to place in there. And once I find that, I will click to have it added onto the, uh, onto the library. Okay, or onto onto the actual drawing itself, and so let me find this. I'm going to use this one for right now and just click OK, and so there it is. Now, as I take a look at this inside the plan view, because this is a, a farm sink, I'm going to just move this forward, if you will, okay, to create that apron. And that may necessitate me also moving the faucet. But again, if you weren't doing a farm sink, then it would drop it centered in the cabinet automatically for you. Let's assume there's going to be a dishwasher over here to the right, so I'll do a quick uh, edit of the base cabinet. And this time, instead of adding a tap sink or mirror, I'm going to 
actually just replace the cabinet. And so here, I will just simply do a, a search. And you see, I'm searching by manufacturer this time, um, in which case I can then click on that manufacturer symbol. It's called out according to its product code. I also see the dimensions in there. And when I click OK, the Bosch dishwasher in this case is dropped in automatically for me. So in, inside of 20 minutes, we've laid out basically the L shape of the kitchen cabinets. We've, we've customized uh, no less than four cabinets on there. Okay, so we're, we're you know we're doing pretty well as far as that goes. Now the next thing that I want to to, to show you is. Um, I want to come in here at this stage and just add some shelving and, and a hood on here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a, a, uh, a quick search for, for hoods, okay, to get myself started. And I want to show you that this is a custom one that I have imported, okay. Now I'm going to, you know, uh, in time, uh, we'll, I'll take you through showing you how to import this. But all I did was basically go out because it was a specific hood I was looking for this project, okay. I found it um, on, on Google Earth. And at that that stage, or, or excuse me, on Google Warehouse. And so now once this has been added, I'm just going to go in and edit some of the dimensions as far as, you know, that is concerned. Because you can see, if I just uh, cancel this for a second and look up, it's fairly large as far as the size is concerned. So I'm going to just edit this over here where I can come into the dimensions on this. I can also key in, you know, the various offsets on this and, you know, push it up to where it needs to be pushed. Okay, so measuring it from the floor, we're going to push that up, so let's say, six feet. OK, and I'll click, you know, OK on that. And so that drops that hood in there for me. Now, I'm going to place shelving on either side of this as well. And so inside the floor plan. All right. As I as I stop, you know, uh, the, the drawing process, some of you may not have considered using rod and shelf as something you could use to create open shelving. Remember in the project, I have shelving flanking either side of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into the to the, uh, the the command for drawing a shelf and I'm just going to click and I'm going to, you know, draw one here. And then I'm actually going to draw something a little bit larger on this side, let's say, okay, and, and place them in there. And so when you look at this, it's exactly what you would have expected because it's some, it's just basically a rod and shelf, you know, from the, from the plan. And as I look at that, I may even adjust this back just a little bit to give us plenty of room there. Now I'm going to edit this one here on the right-hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, just uh, drill down. So uh, on the edit, and I'm going to change a few things. The first thing we're going to do is take the rod out, right? Second thing, I'm going to actually beef up the thickness of the shelf to give it some sort of volume, you know, and heft to it. And then I can change the offset on this to, to be whatever I want it to be. So you can see as I'm keying that in, okay? Um, I'm going to ask you to continue to leave your microphones muted for us, please. That would be ideal. And so then I can also modify the depth on this. So I just want to get something that's maybe not quite, you know, as deep as what even an upper cabinet is. And then we can specify what the spacing of shelving is going to be as I increase the, 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 the shelving on the actual drawing. And so in this case here, we basically um, are, are just setting up, you know, 12 inch spacing, let's say. OK, for those 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 cat or those uh, um, shelves over there. And then I'll just simply do a repeat edit over here. So we're just that kind of that open shelving feel to go with this, you know, which is was really a, more of a historic type kitchen, you know, that we're, that we're doing. So old school as far as that goes. Now, surfaces will change the wood textures and all of that. But that's how we're going to create that. To go along with this, okay, so we've got our cabinets in now. All right, we've got, you know, uh, all of the, basically that side done over there. Okay, I'm going to create a, a, uh, a series of, of cabinets over here on the right-hand side. And to do that, I'm going to, you know, need to go in and draw myself in a, a, uh, a refrigerator of sorts. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here through Draw Symbol, and um, I'm going to do a, a quick search for, let's just say, Sub-Zero. OK, and I understand uh, I'm using all high end for the most part symbols on this. We don't all get the, the, the you know, the, the benefit of doing that. Um, but it's fun for the, for this project here that we were. And so I can actually pick the, the from the product go from the 600 series exactly what the symbol is going to be that we're going to use. So I'm going to pick this one here for the, six, the 695 and just basically drop it in. OK, and so that drops that cabinet in there or, or sorry, that that's a symbol in there for me automatically. Now, to go along with this, I want to actually customize a very specific faceplate. 
um, uh, that's going to go on the, this cabinet here, which is going to include a series of drawers, a couple of tall doors, and then maybe a glass cabinet on top to, to go beside this to create some sort of pantry. All that to say, you could also go into the tall cabinets, okay? And uh, I could, you know, I could even go into just to point it out the manufacturer cabinets that are here, and you'll see that we've got a series of tall cabinets that are in there. So if we, this didn't have a a double oven, but this is where you're going to find the oven cabinets in there. Okay, this is where you can find things like pantry cabinets and go through and find them. And as I say, we've got a whole series of them in there, so it could just be as simple as drawing one of those in like so. Now in my case. I'm going to uh, you know, zoom around here so we can take a look at this. So this would do, and we could literally just edit this cabinet if we wanted to, and we could change the overall height of that. But I want to take it a little bit step further, and so we're just going to go in here, and I'm going to take the product code off so it's no longer going to be associated with the manufacturer and add a custom face to this cabinet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the top part on this, and then I'll add a part in there, and I'm just going to click on Drawer. Now the drawer is obviously above the double door. So I'm just going to drag by holding down the left mouse key and drag that down, you know, uh, down below, okay? And so <clears throat> there it is down below, in which case I can then, you know, go in here and set this up here. And I'm going to, you know, key in what the overall dimension is going to be. And let's just say we're going to put a 10 inch drawer at the bottom, okay? So now I'm going to add another part. I'm going to add a second drawer to this. And I'll click OK, and again, it adds it there. I add my recess, and I'm like, oh, I need that, you know, down here. So I just simply drag and drop, OK, and I could put it either above or below the existing one that's there. But because I know I'm going to place a couple of 10-inch drawers in, I'm OK with that. And so, again, I'll add another drawer, OK, to the, to the option, OK, and as I do that, I can drag and drop this one below the double door, but above the existing two that are there. And here I can key in a new dimension of, let's say, six inches. Now, in the case of the double doors, I'm going to let them scale to whatever my dimension is going to be. Those are the items that are going to change in height. And so then lastly, I can add a double door that's going to be placed above this, right? And here I could change this into be glass, okay? And if you're like, oh, I just actually want to put a single door in there, I could always remove that part. I can add a, a new part in there and I could add a single door, you know, something like so. OK, and the same thing, you can, you know, make the changes and, and, and so on as far as, you know, just removing, dragging, dropping, et cetera. OK, to what you want to do as far as the the uh, the, the, the options are concerned. So in this case here, I, I've added a single standard door. OK, I could add another, you know, one and so on. OK, so hopefully that all makes sense. OK, because that's what you can do as far as the plans are concerned. And so in this case here. Um, I, you know, as far as the tall cabinet is concerned, I'm actually going to, uh, because I've already created this project once, I'm going to erase this cabinet out of here, and I have this actually situated on another, you know, drawing. So I want to drag this onto the drawing screen. Now let's assume you've created something somewhere and you want to utilize it in another project. I can come in through Edit and use what's called Copy to Soft Plan Clipboard. Okay, so if you've ever created a fireplace somewhere, you've created whatever it may be. In my case, I know I have these cabinets somewhere. I'm just going to copy to the soft plan clipboard found under the edit command. So edit, copy to clipboard. Now inside the floor plan itself, I can once again go to edit and this time paste from soft plan clipboard. I can now pick or hold the position. And when I do this, I'm going to paste the, the cabinets in there, something like so. And as I come back, you can see I now have my cabinets drawn in there. It carries everything with it, including the finishes, so that's why they're white. But that copy and paste from clipboard is something I use all the time. OK, and so there's no sense of recreating the wheel if you know that you've got it elsewhere inside the, the, the program. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm editing the, the um, refrigerator because I'm just grabbing what, whatever the height is going to be on this. I need the width. It's a four foot wide. And so inside the, the plan view, OK, I'm going to hit escape from my copy paste. And I'm going to come in here through draw and cabinet, and I'm going to select my my excuse me my wall cabinet. Okay, and so once I've done that, 
I can key in a custom width if, if necessary. So let's just say I'm going to key in 48 inches, and I'm going to key in a height of 24 inches, and I know the offset on this needs to be 7 feet. That gets me to my 108, and I also want a depth of 24 because there's zero point in me having a 12-inch cabinet over that deep of a refrigerator. And so now I can just you know click where I want this to be and have it dropped in on the actual drawing itself. And so as we take a look, there it is up there. So that's all of our cabinets. It with minus the island at this stage put in play. Let's edit a few dialogue items as it pertains to the individual cabinets themselves and how you can change items to go with it. Okay, we're a half hour in. We've gotten a ton done in just 30 minutes. If I edit this cabinet here over to the left hand side, we'll start with it. First thing you can do is you can change the finishes on it. Okay, so in this case here, I could just, you know, literally go through and pick what I want for a finish. This is how you could have, you know, painted upper cabinets and a dark or stain on the lower and so on, okay, is you just basically assign a different finish to the cabinets, okay? If the cabinets are cleaned up, in other words, you haven't exploded them, they're going to edit together as a single unit, okay? To go along with this, I can also go in and I can change things like on the wall, on the accessories, what kind of crown molding I want on there. So when I click that, I can pick from the properties that are there and actually have the, 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 the properties assigned to that option, okay? While I'm in here, I can also also change what my my property is going to be as far as what the handles will look like and so these are just DWG files okay or symbols that you can you know obviously save into your libraries as well and so once I've done <coughs> all of those changes I could then come along here and just simply repeat edit those changes. Now, I did notice real quick, I, I, I must have done an undo at some point, and, and uh, so I'm just checking to make sure that I've got my glass cabinets in there. Okay, so we're good. The other thing that you, you want to do is, as I'm editing this, and again, a kind of an after fact, is I'm going to edit this cabinet, and I'm going to add a right panel on that. And that just gives it that, that difference between, you know, kind of a um, introductory grade cabinet, all right, and, and something that's going to be a little more customizable or finished as far as that option is concerned. Now, the same thing goes for the lower cabinets. I can edit these, okay, and I can come in and I can modify the same thing as being painted as far as those are concerned. I can change the countertop material for, you know, to, to, to whatever it needs to be, okay, and you can just go through, which this will impact your bill of materials if you're drawing towards that. And under the accessories, this is where you can get into not only changing for the doors, but in my case, I can also go in and assign different options for the, the actual drawers themselves. And so you're going to see my drawers have got kind of the pull cup, right? And then I've got, you know, the, the uh, you know, more of the pull pipe type handle that's going to be used on the actual doors themselves. You'll see it gets all of the cabinets that are in the completed run because this has been broken up by the, 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 uh, the range that I dropped in there. I'll simply need to come in and repeat edit that same change there. And while I'm here, this is where I would come into the cabinet run and add the panel on that side, okay? And so again, I'm going to do the same thing up here where I'm just kind of editing this real quick just to get it, you know, into, uh, you know, so everything is, is, you know, looks good as far as, you know, symmetry is concerned. And we'll add our crown mold in there. We'll click OK. And on the actual uh, cabinet run, we're going to, you know, paint that like so. OK, something like so. Now, you could. Um, edit this, and, and you'll notice if I do an edit on these lower cabinets for just a second, there is a whole host of cabinet finishes that are not assigned. All right, so a big thing that a lot of people are doing, right, is uh, I did it in my own kitchen. We've got white cabinets around the outside, and then we've got a colored island. Now, you know, whether that's a gray or a blue or whatever is going on in, in the current, you know, uh, culture of, of, of the designs for this year, you can basically assign cabinet finish 14, for example, to be a gray wood panel. Right. And so then you're if you draw your cabinets and assign it that finish, that would give you the ability to have different colors in there. All right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to click cancel on that. OK, I'm going to just pull back and just gain a little bit of insight for 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 what I've got, you know, done so far. And um, 
I'm going to go in and we're going to tackle, you know, placing the the uh, the island in place because I want to take you in creating a custom symbol as well. All right. So what we will do at this stage is inside the floor plan, okay, which is here's where we're, we're, we're situated right now, is I'm just going to come in through cabinet and I'm going to select the base cabinet. And here I could select, let's say, the 36 or a 39 inch cabinet, whatever, you know, I'm looking for. Okay. So I'm just going to key in 39 inches as far as that. The, uh, the 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 drawers, or I could go with doors and drawers. So let me find something um, that'll work for that. Okay, so that's what my cabinet is going to look like. And I'm going to drag this over here. I'm just going to click to drop it in. If I go to the dimension option and I turn on my my uh, dimension for symbols up here in the status bar, that's going to allow me to place my dimensions exactly where I want them to be. Now we know that you know right here we're going to want a minimum of 42 inches, okay, it, 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 you know to create space. And ideally with with a range that big, 48 would make more sense likely for what we're doing. And we can probably get away with the 42 or so inches in this direction right here, okay, because of the busy path. And so again, using the draw select or just hitting the letter S, I can go ahead and add all of those cabinets in. And as we take a look, we've got our island dropped in the middle, something like so. OK, now this is where you can actually edit this and you could come in and we could add different. You know, I talked about the panels. I, I've talked about adding handles and drawers and all of that stuff. And I can also add something like legs to this, whereby we could then start going in and adding, you know, full size legs to the actual island itself, where whether we want them in the front, on the sides, etc. OK, and once I've done uh, on one side, I could then, you know, repeat edit that same change. OK, so I'm just going to edit, you know, that and go into the accessories uh, and then pick, you know, what the legs are going to look like because we actually want something that's a little more square than what I selected. And you could certainly specify the dimensions and where you want those legs to be. So again, you just pick, you know, what the size is going to look like, etc. Okay, I can also, I'm just going to undo, um, I could edit this and I'm going to turn the countertop off. And so in my case, if I turn the countertop off on one side and then the other, okay, so we now have no counter on this, this would allow me to also go in now and freeform sketch something. So here, and then I'll do this, which will be a little bit different than what we had, but under the cabinet and the countertop option, I'm just going to go ahead and sketch in a counter over this. Now, this can be dimensioned. I'm going to do it by eye for today, okay, because it's close enough. But now I can adjust this, you know, in any direction I want as far as overhangs are concerned. And the reason that I, I drew this in manually is I can edit this counter and I can go on to the individual edge and I can actually give it a deflection. So as I do that, okay, as you can see, as I increase this, all right, I'll be able to go in and, and set up some sort of a curved, you know, breakfast bar, if you will, on the end of said cabinet. OK, and so that's something we can do. Obviously, we'll put brackets or legs or something like that underneath that, which we can use our posts for. So in this case here, again, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to paint the cabinets. OK, uh, I'm going to change the accessories to match. Um, just in case we were doing some sort of an animation or walkthrough, not to mention our bill of materials would get this correct. OK, and so once I've done all of that, I can repeat edit that change so that we've got that, you know, you know, set on there. Obviously, this would probably be full doors on this side, right, as opposed to having a drawer option up here. And that's why working inside the 2D and the 3D simultaneously helps you to troubleshoot, you know, any items that you might run into, okay, so that when you're looking at it, I can say, okay, over here makes no sense to have drawers, but on this side, maybe I want to do full drawers going all the way down. Again, I'll edit the, the over here, and I can add the panel in on the, the, the left and the right-hand side, and I'm just going to, you know, do the same thing, oops, uh, editing left and right panels, you know, for both sides so that it looks, you know, decent uh, on this end as well as down by the kitchen end as well. And we'll, we'll leave that there. <clears throat> okay. With this right here, I want to take you in for just a second and show you, um, you know, something that I, I, I wanted to create. So I went to 3D Warehouse by SketchUp. Okay. So Google basically manages this site. You do have to set up a, a, um, a free, you know, uh, uh, you know, user account, if you will, it doesn't cost you anything. And what I did is I did a search for countertop pop-up outlet, as you can see right here. Okay. So you just, just do a search on 3D warehouse, click on the link. And then once you're here, you can begin typing in the search parameters for it. They'll prompt you. You need to create a, a, uh, you know, a, a user, uh, a free user, um, 
you know, a profile, and then you can look whatever you want. Now, once I've found what I want, I simply download that file there. These are just SketchUp files, okay? So, um, in essence, you just pick the version or the model. Usually, it doesn't matter as far as, you know, what you're doing, um, you know, for, for details and so on. Uh, and so, in my case, um, I'm going to, you know, select the, the, the SketchUp 2019 model, and at that point, it's going to ask me where I want to save it, and I would save it to my desktop. Now I'm gonna I'm saving a few steps there on the on the process um, so that, you know we don't have to go through saving it to my desktop. At that stage what I would do is I would come in through file. I would come in through system okay uh, options and then system library. Now I know I've already got one of these in here okay so I'm just gonna go down to uh, kitchen is where I want to you know add this library in there and you can see I already have one so I'm gonna have to create a secondary one for us to use and so in this case here I will simply select wizard and it pops up this dialog for me here and I'm gonna call this pop up outlet uh, 2 okay and I'm gonna select next and when I did, when at this point it's prompting me, is it on my drawing screen? Well, the answer is no, it's not. And so I'm going to select that as my no option and pick next. Now it's going to ask me to import the the, the 3D symbol. And so in this case here, I can click on to to, to import or, or browse this. And so once I, I browse that to the pop-up outlet, I select open, and I'm going to you know determine I want to put this in a new folder just for today. And so I'll just call it FF for Friday Fundamental, and I'll click OK for that symbol and select OK. And so what Softland's now doing is it's grabbing that file. And if I hold down my mouse key, it pulls around what this pop up outlet is going to look like. And so I'll select the next option. The next thing you want to do is verify the orientation of the symbol. And so in this case here, I'm going to say no. I don't think it's oriented correct because that's not the back. That's the front to me. Okay, so I'll click next. So now I'm going to orient the symbol. So the top is correct. I'll leave the bullet point in there. I'll click next. This is where I'm going to change and make this the front. And so now I'll click next. And at this stage now, left and right, usually all of that pops into, into place correctly. So we get to this option right here and we're taking a look at it and you can see I've got my textures. I'm fine with that, okay? I don't need to load anything, but this is where you could reassign textures and colors and so on. Okay, and then you get your dimensions. Okay, so all of those usually it's created to scale. Uh, all right, but you could override the default if for any reason. And then finally, I could reference this. I could, you know, set it to the ground, the floor, to stack, whatever I may need to, to be. So I'm going to say floor, and I'm going to say just move the bottom right now to whatever that dimension needs to be to get it set in there. We know the top of counter is 36 inches. We know the symbol I think was created. If I go back for just a moment, it was created with a height of just under three inches so I could go in and do the math and just say move the bottom 33 inches chances are I may need to still tweak that a little bit okay um, it will have softless properties all of these are, are whether it's going to display in interior elevations and so on so I'll click the next and now I click the generate button and what softline is going to do is take a look at the three-dimensional symbol for me and create me a 2d you know symbol preview and I'll say next because I'm happy with it and select finish so now when I click on draw symbol I'm gonna do a search for pop-up outlet okay and I've got two of them there there's the one we just created I've got you know um, it obviously looks exactly like the original but I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to click to draw one in and uh, and I'll take a look at it in 3d first <coughs> excuse me and so let me uh, just do a quick edit on this because I think I may need to, to push it up a little bit so I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna key this all the way up to 36 inches for just a second okay and so there it is and that's just me getting the elevation offset correct all right and so I'm gonna zoom this up and I'm actually just going to look at this real quick and I'm going to inside 3d do the move option and you know I'm just, you know, in essence, this is me designing in 3D now, right? And so once I've got one of those in there, I'll just do a copy and, you know, put another one over there, okay, so that now we've got two of them. While I'm here, uh, I also, I'm just going to go into kitchen, and I'm going to go to uh, my plumbing fixtures, and I'm just going to scroll down and find a small sink to drop in there. Okay, and so as I, you know, I explode the cabinets real quick, and I drop that in. So now what we've done is we can see where our pop-up 
you know, mockets are. So setting those up, I place the sink in there and as I take a look at it in 3D, you can see how quickly I've created that. Lastly, I would probably come in at this stage and I'm just going to go to draw and post. Uh, I'm in my decorative post and I'm just trying to find something, you know, really, really quick. I'm going to, you know, click to and drop something in. This is obviously fairly large. Okay. So I will take the, uh, take this down to three and a half inches. I'm going to adjust the height to 34 and a half inches. Okay. The offset is, you know, to sit on top of the slab that's there. And so as I come into 3D, there's one. Okay. And so even this, I could adjust this just so if I need to. And then I could, you know, once again, once I have that in there, I could then just copy that over to this side. So we've now got a post on either side. OK, so let's uh, let's back this up and just see where we're at, because um, we've done a lot inside of 45 minutes. And here in the final um, 15 minutes of what we're doing, I want to go in and get some of those nice finishes on there, get the electrical in. I already started with some can lights. Those were existing. Right. But now what we want to do is we want to go in and maybe, you know, add some it's some of the light sources, because that's really going to bring this model to life. And so, you know, in my case here. All right, I'm going to, you know, let's say go into um, uh, into, into the plan and I'm going to change into electrical mode, okay, to do some of this work here. And I'm going to select the uh, draw option and electrical symbols. And once again, as we drill down into manufacturers, this is where we're going to find, you know, uh, some of them. And if I go into Softplan Plus, we've also got, you know, a, a series of, of, you know, library items that are there. And this is where I can, you know, click into the, the chandeliers. I'm going to go into the 3D because that, that's going to speak a little more to me as far as, this, you know, the, the, the sizing and, and, and so on. And what the, the look is and so I'll scroll down and maybe find something that's a little more uh, eclectic and drop it in now as we take a look at this inside 3d the one thing that we're lacking right now is shadows right and so if I were to come in here and change this into textured for just a moment okay and I'm gonna go into before I even regenerate this pick options and mode options I'm gonna lower a few things so first of all the anti-aliasing is going to basically how crisp that image is okay so I'm lowering that right now because I don't need this to be a, you know overly sharp as far as you know picture quality is concerned lighting okay when it's turned on this is you know first of all under the custom lighting you can set up the ambient light the overall brightness of the model the headlight when you where you're standing it lights the model itself okay um, where you can get into you know modifying and setting up shadows and even tone mapping for various textures etc so once I have done this and I hit regenerate on this just take a look at adding just you know the light sources to this right now what that's going to do for us automatically now the light sources including the can lights that are up there can be modified so in here I can actually come in through edit on this option edit these and go into the lights and I can change what the brightness is of that light and how far they're going to be bright you know how bright they're going to be so if you are doing a three-dimensional model and you are getting white spots washout spots it's probably just because you've got so many light sources going on that what you need to do is either um, turn off some of them okay or you need to turn down their brightness and so as I go in here I can turn on the custom of this light and then I could you know either up or lower it I could even go in and set up a, a color hue on my light source if I'm trying to get something that's a little more yellow and so once again I can come in here through draw symbols I'm gonna go to uh, let's just say Wayfair real quickly and look at their pendants that they've got and and just try and find something that I can use okay um, real quick and so I'm just taking a look at my my, my various options that are available um, so maybe let's take a look at this one and see how it looks and I will drop one here and then I'm just going to copy another over to this side right here and we'll take a look at that inside 3d <clears throat> and let that 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 run all the way through on the regeneration and so you can begin to see the darkening a little bit of that just because one of the things I did was turn down the brightness on the can lights so we see you know the lights in, in and so on so I can increase or decrease that you know accordingly all right what I tend to tell you not to do too often is go in here and try and brighten it just using this because what you're doing is you're artificially brightening something okay um, and and the light sources are going to be a truer method of that. 
All right. In the final 10 minutes of, of our class, what I'd like to do is take you in and work with some of the finishes. And so in this case here, what we're going to do is we're going to change into our, our various modes that are available to us. OK, in particular, interior mode. All right. And, and, and add in you know some of the finishes that are here. So as I come back into the floor plan. All right, I'm going to zoom out for just a second, and I'm going to change here first into what is called room mode. Now, when I change into room mode and I go to draw in room, you'll be able to see that you can come in here and you could do a quick, uh, you know, search for, let's just say living, just, you know, for that. And when I do an auto trace and click and add that in, all right, and I'll say uh, cancel and do not add whatever that, that, that the ceiling was. As I edit this, you'll have the ability to go in and, and specify what kind of chair rail, baseboard, ceiling, and so on. All of that information is automatically added. In my case, it, so if I were to come in here and I turn to the left, okay, there it is. All right, and so I've got you know wall cover, baseboard, and 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 yada yada all in there, and then I could you know modify what that ceiling texture is going to be. If I want greater control over this, I'm going to do this using what's called interior mode. Okay, and in, in interior mode, I can come in and sketch in specifically where I want specific items. So inside the floor plan, I'm going to change from room to interior. And what this does is it's like it takes the room mode and breaks it down into the individual pieces, the, the sum of the, the parts that made up room, okay? So in this case here, I'm going to select wall covering, and I'm just going to select, let's say, uh, ceramic tile two. For example, and in our case here, we're just going to sketch it on these two walls as having floor to ceiling ceramic tile. So when I come back into 3D and I'm going to go back into my shaded for just a second because it generates faster, you can see what we have for the texture itself. And so as I edit this, you can see that's the texture that we're going to be using. Now, I want to change that all together, OK, because I, I want to use something that's a lot more customizable. All right. So I'm going to come in and we're going to do a, a uh, go into the, the manufacturers themselves, okay, to, to, uh, to uh, on this. So I'm going to scroll this list down here, and I'm going to come into Manufacturer. I'm going to scroll down into Soft Plan Plus, and this gives me my list of textures that are available. So I'm scrolling this list. I'm going to go to Mosa Tile. Now, the Mosa Tile, um, and again, some of this is going to it's going to be a learned experience where a lot of things are, okay? But I can come down, and I can now select a texture pattern from there. These are are actual texture patterns from the manufacturer they're high resolution even in shaded mode the difference of how that looks it, you can see it immediately on screen okay so we have that there and I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna click OK on that because I'm good with that now let's say we wanted to create here a um, you know kind of a, a niche and we're going to put a different tile in there, and it's a custom tile that we want. Okay, so I'm going to come in to to the uh, to the to the um, back to the floor plan for just a second. Okay, and I'm going to select. Uh, I need to be inside drawing mode. I'm going to pick draw opening, and I'm just going to select uh, niche. And so I scroll down and take a look at my niche, and I've got a 24 by 30. Okay, I don't want it to be cased, and I'm just going to click to add that in there. So now I can edit this, okay, as far as what the size is concerned. And this is where I could take the product code off, and I'm going to change the width to, let's say, maybe 4 feet or 3 foot 6, right? Just something that, that's going to be – and I, I need something that's large because I've got such a, um, you know, a large, you know uh, – uh, what do you call it, um, you know, gas grill right there. And I'm going to change the offset on this. I'm going to change the bottom of this to, let's say, five feet, okay, to push it above the counter. So when we come in, all right, there it is. And you can see it's obviously too high. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to take that, you know, down to, let's say, four feet. Okay, and I'm just, this is just designing on the fly, right? And I could even change the height on this. We're just going to go with a, a two foot and a three foot six inch, you know, height right there. So boom, we've got it. Now let's just say we want to modify and change, you know, the, the tile pattern that's in there to something else. And all I'm going to do for this one is, is well, I could create a, a, you know, customizable material that can be linked out in the bill of materials. I'm actually just going to use what's called a solid to do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here through draw plane, and I'm actually going to sketch this out here in front to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this across, 
And, and, and what I've done is I've created a three-dimensional, it's just a plane or object that's in there. And I can come in and I can offset this up to, what was it, four feet? I can't, I'm not even, re can't remember. And I can change the height to, let's say, two foot six. And uh, I will, you know, I will change the solid to be whatever I want it to be. And, okay, so right now it shows as a solid blue. Okay, so that's my texture. And as I, it looks like I was off on the height, so I'll edit this and maybe change it back to, let's say, two feet, just to get a little bit closer to what I've got. Now, this can have a surface assigned to it. So I'm going to click the display texture on here, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to go into my, uh, my, my interior finish, and I've got a a customizable, you know, or maybe one that I've already done myself. And this was just provided by the manufacturer, right? So I got a PDF from them and I just simply scanned in or did a screen capture of this texture to, to, to place in there. It's just a JPEG. And then once it's in there, I can go in and I can even scale it and change what the overall dimension size is going to be and have that texture assigned. Once I've done this, I can actually now just move this, okay, inside the niche. And so now we're going to have, you know, the texture assigned there inside the actual niche itself. OK, so um, that's, you know, how you could quickly do that. And of course, I can just adjust this to suit accordingly as far as that's concerned. OK, so that gets uh, that takes care of that a, a little bit. And we'll, we'll get all of this, you know, right now we're in shaded mode. So we're going to get this to a much higher res and take care of some of the, the other things. So I want to put a crown mold all the way around this that you're going to do that inside interior mode. OK, and so I can come in here and once again through the interior mode. All right. Um, I'm just going to whoops click on that and I will select my draw. I'm gonna select my crown mold. I can pick the crown mold that I want. I'm gonna auto trace this one and just click. And then I can actually edit that individual crown mold. And I can even override the sizing on this if I wanted it to be something that was a little more robust than what we have. So if you're looking at this and it looks too small, then you can always edit it both in plan view or inside the 3D. And this is where you can now specify custom height and take it to you know something that's a little bit larger and, and, and you know, uh, built out and then I can also come in here and change the thickness and make this you know as I say something that's you can see up here much more uh, robust if you will compared to the kitchen cabinets themselves so I will click OK on this and I'm just going to uh, I'm going to add a microwave in here and a couple of objects as and then we're going to take this into the high-end 3d okay so I'm going to um, I'm just going to change from interior into to, to drawing mode I'm going to explode this real quick I'm going to come in through symbol and I just want I think General Electric is I, I can find something quickly there for what I want to do so I will you know do that and we're just going to do a quick look for microwaves Okay, that's an over-the-range one. Um, I'll see what I can find, you know, just quickly here. <clears throat> and once I scroll, uh, I may just go with what I had there uh, to, to finish it out. So let me just go back to this one for right now, just to give us the, the, the feel for what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to click and add this in here inside the cabinet. Okay, and so I'm going to, you know, just move that over to set it inside. And as I take a look at this, I can move it here as well to, you know, as far as sizing is concerned, I can change the shelving on this depending on, you know, what we want to do as far as the shelving is concerned. And I can also come in, if I'm just looking to decorate a little bit, right? Um, you know, add, there's all kinds of different materials in there. So I'm going to do a quick search for books um, just to, 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 uh, to finish this out. And so I can see the inside the interior decor, uh, you know, I've got a, a book collection. And so I'll just do a quick, um, you know, drop in there and we see that it's there. So again, inside 3D, I'm just moving things around a little bit to get them into place. And once I've got the height roughly, I can always move it and adjust it after the fact. And so that's all I'm doing just to, you know, add a few, you know, details in there. And, you know, this, you can draw inside 3D. I tend to, you know, uh, as well, but, um, you know, for, for moving things like that into place, it's usually a combination of both of those. Okay. And so as I pull this back, all right, as we're, we're getting close to the end of what we can, you know, do as far as the class is concerned, the last thing that I want to cover off with you is just that you can come into your treatments, 
Okay, and here you can add different types of co you know covering. So you'll see by default, my uh, this has already gone to a, a a horizontal you know cover right there. So we've got that set up. You can fit it to the rough opening, or you can make it you know fit to the overall size. It's entirely up to you what you how you want to show that. While you're here inside the interior trim, you can also go in and customize your interior trims. So if you're looking to get something that's a little more uh, uh, robust uh, as far as the define is, definition is concerned. I could come in here to my, um, you know, my interior casing that I've got, and then from there I could actually select that I want to, you know, go with a colonial casing, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing on the sides, and so I'll just click on this and pick my colonial casing for the sides, and then on the bottom, uh, I, I actually want to have a, a have the apron run through, so I'm going to customize this at this point, which would then allow on the below for it to run through as as far as the apron is concerned, and you could add corner blocks and so on. OK, so lastly, what we want to do to create a 3D is in addition to going to the textured mode. OK, we will come into mode options and under the face options, we're going to turn on things like reflections so that our hardwood reflects right relief depth. So that if we have a brick texture, we can create an artificial depth on the mortar joints and and so on. OK, so all of that's going to be you know created there for you. We talked a little bit about lighting and do we want shadows and so on on there. OK. Um, and then, you know, other things like turning up the anti-aliasing is going to increase the level of detail. It does come at a cost of speed. So just keep that in mind as far as for your renderings are concerned, that the more details you turn on, obviously the, 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 um, the, the you know, the, possibly the slower that you're going to, to have. What I would tell you is this, this is rendering. I've obviously got a, my computer is about a year old. It's, it's pretty up to speed as far as things go. I've got a video card that is basically for all intents and purposes a gaming card so it's got plenty of memory um, you know in order to create things so if you're if you're running a 3d and yours appears to be a little bit slower than mine it's probably just because the video card is what you're looking at on, on doing so this is just kind of rendering uh, believe it or not we drew this entire thing in one hour now the design was obviously a known quantity so you you, you know you can't judge things by by that but the fact that we we're able to lay this out as quickly as we did um, um, I think is is fairly impressive. Um, as I have said to you already, uh, I have recorded today's class, so I'll be posting that to our social media pages um, early next week so you can go back and review it because obviously I went fairly quick. But I do want to thank you very much for being here today. This is our first uh, in a host that we of, of Friday Fri Fundamentals that we hope to host with you this summer. Um, next week we'll be doing outdoor living, so we, uh, we hope to see you back for that. Um, that's what I have for you today, so uh, be safe and have a great weekend.